almost exactly two years ago, I quit DoorDash for good. About half the views on my channel and about 25% of my subscribers know me from this video in which I described how I made over $12,000 a month on DoorDash. This anniversary marks the passing of a very important threshold in which I'm making the same amount of money, except the only difference is that on DoorDash, I was working around 90 hours a week. Now I'm working something a lot closer to the four hour work week. I am here to say thank you. I hope that you continue following my journey and I hope that you continue gaining value from what I have to say. I am traveling the world with my family currently in Pisa. Tomorrow we're headed to Malta. But before we go, I need to deliver my best tips for working the four hour work week in real life. Okay, so tip number one, if you wanna work the four hour work week in real life is to automate everything. In 2023, it's estimated that around 50% of all the work that we do can be automated. But I don't think that I'd be exaggerating if I were to say that in an office setting, in a work from home type of setting, that number is closer to 90 or 95% in the average workplace. And I'm not just talking about new advanced tools like ChatGPT and Bard, uh, but I'm using tools that you already know and love like Integromat or Make, Zapier, Google Spreadsheets, as well as a suite of our own tools built in React and PHP. My outsourcing company, Low Assistance, is quite literally automating 95 or maybe even as high as 97% of work that would have been done by hand as little as five years ago. And I'm sad or not to say that most workplaces just aren't doing the same thing. I won't go too far into it in this video, but if you want to get like really into the nitty gritty, into the fine details of, of how we create and how we automate, go see my other YouTube channel, at Lil Assistance. We, we don't pay quite as much attention to the YouTube algorithm, produce longer, more in-depth videos. But for now, let's move on. If you want to create the four hour work work week in real life, create assets. If you've been following along on my journey, you've probably seen this video where I describe how I make $3,000 a month selling stock video. This actually started in my DoorDash days. I hired a video editor in Mexico City to edit my videos into stock so that I can continue selling them over and over and over again. If you take a look at this video, for example, from Mexico City, I hired somebody to record it, I hired somebody else to edit it, and I hired somebody else to write the metadata. Because obviously I'm doing this in bulk and paying by the hour, I I think that I spent a grand total of around $10 on this clip and it's made me to date, it's made me around $2,000. If you're watching this, I probably don't need to explain to you the power of having a thing that you can sell over and over and over again. But what you might not know is that it's not just the power of big numbers. I don't think that I have ever made or paid to have made a digital asset that wasn't worth the time or the money. This doesn't just apply to stock video. I've run 1,500 digital assets for sale that are that are not related to stock, stock video, stock photos. And you can create anything of the kind, guides, educational material, photos, postcards, anything that is not directly tied to your time. And as much as I like talking about digital assets, I think that's really the key to this one, is you're building things that you get paid for that are not directly tied to your time. I make enough money selling digital assets that I could theoretically work zero hours per week if I really wanted to. Tip number three, if you want to work the four hour work week in real life is to outsource and delegate everything that can't be automated. Well, even the things that can, check this out. Hey Trevor, uh, we are in Pisa today, but tomorrow we're flying to Malta. I need a full schedule. I want to know the best restaurants, the best activities for kids, the most unique experiences, not just like the normal touristy stuff, you know, like really the best stuff in Malta, in Valletta specifically. Trevor is one of our project managers and what he's gonna do is he's gonna drop a document with all the steps, one, two, three, that need to happen in order to make what I just said reality and then he's going to assign the proper people to it so that I don't have to really lift a finger. I want you to turn all of that information into about 10 blog articles and 10 YouTube videos for a rogue traveler blog. Go ahead and make use our stable diffusion on little assistance uh, and make about 10 to 20 uh, digital products like postcards, travel posters, and the like. Go ahead and put them up on Etsy for sale and put them also up on our own website for sale. So essentially they're gonna be using AI and automation to take what used to be, I don't know, 150 hours worth of work and cram it into 20 hours worth of work. When our See the Journey video comes out in a couple of weeks, we're gonna really push those products so those need to be done ASAP. All the information that I mentioned at the beginning of this message I want done by tomorrow. 
All I had to do personally was leave, you know, a 15, 20 second voice message and we're going to turn our whole trip to Malta into, you know, 20 digital products, blog articles, videos, you name it. Everything that we need to run a business essentially. This is the part of the video where I tell you about my outsourcing agency, Little Assistance, where you can outsource pretty much any job that can be done from a laptop. We have designers, developers, uh, we have project managers, we have content writers, we have SEO optimization specialists, we have people who can do pretty much anything that can be done from a laptop. And they are all at your disposal for usually cheaper than what you could outsource yourself. We have all the software, all the infrastructure that you could possibly need to run an online business. If that sounds like something you're interested in, go and check us out at littleassistance.com. If not, that's cool too. This video is still for you. We can watch them blast off. So this time, I'm Cheers. Too good luck. We're in Malta! Yay! Oh, you see a tiny one? Through the balcony. So I couldn't finish this video before. Uh, we made it to Malta and this place, I have to say, is amazing. It's blown my expectations like straight out of the water. Honestly, I don't really know what I was expecting, um, but the architecture, the, the, the colors, and we, <laughs> we got here right at the right time because the weather is perfect. It probably helps that we are staying at this kick-ass place called Murea Mansions. If you ever find yourself in Malta, I definitely recommend this place. Almost done. All right, let's go. My next tip for working four hour work week in real life is you have to focus on the high value task. This is easier said than done when you are a solo entrepreneur because as a solo entrepreneur, you're doing everything from the marketing to the web design to the social media and everything. And that's why I think that this goes hand in hand with outsourcing and delegating. This has been a particularly difficult one for me to draw because I'm a little bit of a perfectionist. I like to have my hand in everything and I don't like letting things go until I know that they're gonna be perfect. Uh, you have to think of your time as having Having a certain dollar value. This is what I've found that makes it a little bit easier. Think about like how much is your time worth or what is your opportunity cost? Like right now, could you go out and make some money? If you're in the US or Canada or or the UK or Australia where you have you know gig apps and where you can pretty much work on demand, your time is probably worth at least $20 an hour. Once you sort of figure out what your time is worth, take any task and ask yourself, could I pay somebody to do this less? Let's just say I finished an email and it took me half an hour. Is this email really worth $10 or $20 or whatever half an hour costs of my time? By the way, you should never be just creating an email, just writing and sending an email. Most of the time, if you're writing an email, you should be recording that response so that <laughs> you can delegate that in the future and so that somebody, your staff in the future, knows how to respond to said email, said question. Every single new email should turn into like a script. And in doing that, that, that half an hour that you spent on an email might be worth $10, $20, because it's turning into something that you can replicate over and over and over again. And for that reason, I found that most of my professional time nowadays is spent creating processes. That's the most efficient use of my time, figuring out where there are mistakes, figuring out how to make processes more efficient, and writing processes, sometimes from scratch, although I actually have a process for making processes now that my staff can then use to create processes. When I say processes, by the way, I'm talking about like standard operating procedures, step one, step two, step three, and you know, if this happens, then do this. We create processes for pretty much every single task. I'm not sure that there's a single task that we just like do off the top of our head or figure it out as we go. And if we do figure it out as we go, then we write a process. My next tip is to document absolutely everything. In sort of the same vein as, you know, creating these process documents, you need to turn everything into a replicable procedure. The majority, I'm gonna say like 60% of my staff is focused on content writing and SEO. <laughs> content pieces are generally speaking reserved for content writers, but if you create a process on how to write a document, how to write a content piece using AI, using the latest tools, that is perfectly clear step by step, has these requirements and says, at the end of this, check for this, 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 and this, because these are the common mistakes. Pretty much anyone can pick up that standard operating procedure and write a passable content piece. And then of course we have our most skilled content writers who are just checking things over and it just makes the entire thing more efficient and easier. Not to mention if and when you sell your company, these are the, what your buyer is looking for. It's like learned experience. What can I do? What can I replicate to produce the same results as this company? These next two could totally be taken independent of each other. I think that for the majority of people, they're going to 
have a hard time with their you know human need for security if they don't take them together so I'm just gonna say them together experiment often and fail fast the vast majority of people are gonna go through dozens of business ideas that don't work before they find something that does and it's all about that learning curve that's where success comes just as an aside here if you failed at half a dozen businesses you're right where most people give up but I'm gonna implore you don't because the way I see it that's really just halfway to success it takes a few failures to get there because that learning curve that's where that's where success happens the next tip is that I definitely recommend full-time travel or like a permanent remote working location I know that a permanent vacation sounds a lot more like a fantasy than reality to most people watching this probably but the truth is I mean if you're paying four thousand five thousand dollars to live in LA, you could get the same lifestyle for $1,000 in Puerto Escondido, Oaxaca. If you're paying $4,000 a month to live in a small town in Oregon like I was, you can get the same lifestyle for about $1,500 in Lisbon or in Centra in Portugal. Please take it to somebody who's been traveling full-time for the majority of the last decade. It is way cheaper to park yourself in a, in a cheap country or even to just like keep hopping from place to place to place full time. Permanent vacation, I promise you, is the cheapest option. And that's exactly why I wanted you to take this one and the last one in conjunction with each other because it's a lot easier to take risks and to fail faster if your living expenses are only $1,000 a month. If you're not living paycheck to paycheck, you can't really take risks if failure means homelessness. So definitely keep that in mind. If you're at that point, that paycheck to paycheck point, you've got to get out of that first. That's not just to like live while traveling, that's just to live, that's just to do business. If you ever want to really be successful, your first step has to be to get out of that paycheck to paycheck, both reality and mindset. Even the coffee's cheaper, just bought this double espresso for one euro 90. Malta, by the way, is not a cheap, cheap country. It's not nearly as cheap as Mexico, but this is like pretty normal in Europe. One euro 90 for a double espresso. I just looked up a cafe uh, in LA. They don't sell double espresso, but a single espresso is $4. And this right here is why I walked all the way here. Last point, and this is absolutely crucial, you have got to cut out information that does not pertain to you. You will get absolutely swallowed by all of the information that's out there and it's highly addictive. I recommend almost entirely cutting out news. It doesn't mean you're not allowed to you know, look at the news ever, but have limits, use certain tools to summarize things. And even when it comes to industry news and, and information that, that maybe does pertain to you, you need to have boundaries and rules because it's addictive. It's time consuming, it's designed that way. <laughs> and it will suck your time faster than you can suck strawberry margarita. That's it, ciao.